this lesson should go um, even faster. It is a slightly different type of marking, not marking, shortcut, um, but it's the same concept. The idea is I want to be able to say that two triangles are congruent to each other, the copies. And we talked about the whole point of the shortcuts is instead of checking six angles, six sides, we can just check three specific strategic items based on our shortcuts. This says HL, which makes you think you're only checking two strategic things. There's actually a secret third thing in there, and it has to do with the type of triangle you're dealing with. Look at this picture. What does it look like is the majority of types of triangles we're working with? Right triangles. So that's the secret third aspect here, okay? Um, HL only works on right triangles. What is a right triangle? Let's refresh you very quickly. Right triangle is a triangle that has exactly one right angle. Um, this little square stands for 90 degrees. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is always opposite of the 90 degrees. That is always called the hypotenuse, which is considered the longest side of a triangle. And that's because it's opposite of the largest angle in the triangle. So that's how, that's why that works out like that. Stand by, I have the wrong paper. Here we go. The two sides of the triangle that make the right angle. I want everybody to take one hand and make a capital L. Take one hand and make a capital L. My five-year-old is doing this right now. We're working on recognizing which one is your left hand. And I keep trying to tell him it's the only hand that makes a capital L correctly. Because he's like, well, this is an L. And I'm like, no, that's, that's the wrong L. And this is an L. This is your left hand. So uh, make a capital L with your hand. The sides of a triangle, a right triangle, that make the right angle are called the legs. Actually, let's don't put a four on there. Let's just say leg, leg. And I'm going to take a highlighter and highlight the capital L within the triangle to show you that the legs of a triangle form basically a capital L, and it's always the right angle. And the hypotenuse is the slanted side side opposite of the 90 degrees, okay? This is really important. This is going to come up again in the next unit as well. So this is, you know, we're going ahead and practicing it right now. So that's a refresher on what is a right triangle. Now let's look at what the actual new shortcut is. It stands for hypotenuse leg, or it's called the HL shortcut. If the hypotenuse and the leg of one triangle, right triangle, are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then you can take the HL shortcut and you can say the two triangles must be copies of each other. Okay? Let's look at this. So, if triangle, let's name it, if I call it A, B, C, notice I went the route of one tick mark, then two tick marks. What would I call this one? X, Y, Z. If triangle A, B, C and triangle X, Y, Z are right triangles, meaning they have these little 90 degree boxes in here. Now let's list our congruent parts. We're going to do the hypotenuse, then we're going to do the legs. So name the hypotenuse in this triangle. You would come to your right angle, you would draw an arrow to the side opposite of it, and that would be the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse. Come over here, draw an arrow from the right angle to 
the hypotenuse. Now let's actually write it out as congruent parts. So this is side BC. What's it congruent to? YZ. And now we can name the legs. What leg do we have over here that has a mark on it? And this one. AB. What's it congruent to over here? XY. So if you have two right triangles, you know the hypotenuse is congruent, you know an additional pair of legs are congruent, notice it doesn't have to be all three. This is not a side, side, side problem. It just has to be one leg and one hypotenuse congruent to one leg, one hypotenuse. Then you can say that the triangles are congruent by the shortcut. Then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. So while HL only has two letters in its shortcut, there's actually three conditions, requirements, things you have to basically check off to use HL. The one that is the first requirement is there are two right triangles. They have to be right triangles, not left ones or wrong ones, but right ones. Then the triangles have the triangles have congruent hypotenuse. It's an unflattering word when you make it plural, but yes. And then there's one pair of congruent legs. Okay. HL is probably one of the easier. Uh, well, side 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 is the easiest. HL probably comes in second. Easiest, um, you just have to remember it's got to be a right triangle and always make sure if one of the congruent sides is the hypotenuse, okay? If you have two congruent legs and you have a right triangle, you don't have enough info for HL, but let me draw just one triangle. Actually, let's all draw it because this would be a what we'll do is, let's put it, there's more room over here, so let's put it right here. We're going to say, be careful, and just draw one triangle with a right angle, and then let's do the legs have congruent marks. So I see a right triangle, and I see two sides of congruent marks, but is the hypotenuse marked? The hypotenuse is not marked because it's actually over here. So this would not be an HL problem. I'm going to write HL and then I'm going to draw a slash through it. This is not an HL problem. Can you think of what shortcut does work here though? Yes, yeah, side angle side does work here. So this would actually be a side angle side problem. And I don't know if you want to like draw a line there to separate this from this info here. But this is saying heads up, be careful. Just because you see a right triangle doesn't mean HL is the answer. Okay? It means HL could be the answer, but if the markings are like this, it's actually a side angle side answer. So be careful. All right, we're going to practice. Then we're going to do um, a practice of everything. So this practice is just HL. Then we're going to practice everything. You will have a quiz tomorrow. The quiz is just what we've been practicing. Do you have enough info to say congruent? If no, great. If yes, then tell me the congruent parts, and then tell me what triangles congruent to what triangle by what reason. You with me? Um, or what additional info would I need to use if I was looking for side, side, side. So it's the same stuff we've been practicing. All right, let's look at this. Determine whether the triangles are congruent. If so, write the congruent statement. 
So if we look at this, number one, if you're going off of congruent marks, you need to pay attention to what if instead of giving me congruent marks, they're actually just telling me what it measures. Then you can go write the congruent marks. Now these triangles are not touching, which means there's no secret info. I'm going off of exactly what it reads. This is 13. This is also 13. So I can naturally say, okay, so that's congruent to that. This is five, this is five. So then this would be congruent to this. Now ask yourself, is this um, not enough info or do we have an HL shortcut? How do you check it? Number one, you check, is it a right triangle? Both of them. Yes. Number two, you check the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, go to the right angle, draw an arrow to the side farthest away. That's the hypotenuse. Come over here, make sure it's the same one. That's the hypotenuse. So we've checked off right angle, we've checked off hypotenuse, and now do you have an additional leg congruent? Yes, you do. So yes, there is enough info here, and it would be an HL shortcut. It says, if so, write the congruence statement. So they want you to actually name a like triangle whatever is congruent to triangle whatever. So come over here, name the first one however you want. Triangle, what do you want to name it? JKL, alphabetical order, maybe. Triangle JKL is congruent. Now, watch how you name stuff. I named it JKL. Trace it with your eyes. So J to K took me going over one tick mark. Then to L took me over the blank side. So over here, I need to trace the one tick mark, then the blank side. So it would be P M N. Number two, look at the picture, ask yourself, um, what am I working with here? First of all, they are touching, which means there might be secret info. What can I mark here? You what? Vertical angles. So I'm going to draw my arrow here and mark that I have vertical angles. Now this says 90. I don't want to come in here and like do that. Right? Because then I'm taking away the fact that I, I'm dealing with a 90 degree angle. It's okay if this is 90, what would this be? To draw a square here. That's the equivalent of, you know, congruent arcs because you're saying they're both 90. Now let's verify. So we definitely have two right triangles. Now let's verify the hypotenuse. So from this right angle to the side opposite is definitely marked. I'm going to write HYP to remind me that's the hypotenuse, or you can put a capital H. It's up to you. Coming over here, draw an arrow. This is also the hypotenuse. And then now do you have an additional pair of sides congruent? That would be the leg. So this is where you're checking the sides that form the right angle, is at least one of them congruent? Yes. So we do have an HL scenario here, and now we need to write our congruent statement. So we call it triangle DEF. Then I would have to name the other one what? So that would be two tick marks and then blank. So it would be HGF. Two tick marks and then blank.
take a look at number three. They're touching, but this is like that one example on the paper two papers ago where I said, yes, they're touching, but they're not like two straight lines and they're not um, a shared side. So this is actually no secret info. You might as well just separate the triangles. There's nothing secret here. Um, what are we working with? HL or not enough info? How do you know for a fact? You're right. We have no clue where the 90 degree angle is. We have an, in, like, you guess, right? You would probably say to yourself, ooh, this looks like a 90 degree angle. But remember, we're in a courtroom. You can't go on guesses. You have to actually know as a matter of fact. You would say, this is probably 90 degrees, but I actually don't know. They didn't tell me it was a right angle. It doesn't have the box to show me it's a 90 degree angle. So I don't have enough info here. So not enough. Now, if I said, like, what additional info would you need? You would say, you would say, I need W, angle W, and angle Y to be 90 degrees. Because in that case, I would have enough info. Number four, what are they doing? What do they have? They've got a shared side. Hopefully, you're still marking this because it is a tremendous help. Because now we have enough info to answer the question. There's one additional thing here that's not marked. You might say, looking at this picture, how many right angles do you see? You see one marked, but there's actually two. Do you remember the lesson on linear pair? When you have a straight line with two angles that come together like puzzle pieces to form the straight line, it means they add up to what? 180. So these two angles are supplementary. Well, if this is 90, then this one is also 90. Now, those are not vertical angles. Those are linear pair where one of them is 90. So by default, the other has to be 90 because they add to 180. So there's actually two things to mark here. Now you know you have two right triangles. Let's draw the arrow to the hypotenuse. Draw the arrow to the hypotenuse. And now verify that we have an additional leg congruent. Yes. So this is an HL scenario. And let's write, make our congruent statement. Let's try that. Here we go. All right, if I call it triangle ABC, ABC, what do I end up with? Triangle DBC. Okay, go to the back. I want everybody to do five through eight. Then we're going to come together for nine and ten. And why is that? It's correct. Yeah, we do have a pair of vertical angles in here. And so if you came in and you made this mark, then you're on the right track. Can I go in and make a 90 degree angle though? No, because I don't know. It could be 89, it could be 91. Be 90.5. Like we don't know. We do know they're equal. We just have no clue the value of them. So in this particular case, we do not have two right triangles confirmed. So there's not enough info here. Uh, number six. <clears throat> what sneaky info do we have? Yeah, we've got vertical angles right here. And in this case, we can write a 90 degree angle because we know one of them is 90. So then the other one must be 90. Um, verify that you have the hypotenuse for both. So are we able to use the HL shortcut here? Yes, these are congruent. Let's name them. You call it WVU. What would you have to name the next one? Very good. 
All right. Number seven, uh, what sneaky info is not marked? There's a shared side here. Um, shared side. Go to your right angle, draw an arrow to the side farthest away. In this particular case, the shared side is the hypotenuse of each triangle. So do we have congruent triangles, yes or no? Yes, we do. What, let's call it JKM. If I call it JKM, what would I call the other one? LKM. All right, number eight. What info is not marked? We have a shared side, so we're going to mark it. But then I would go to my right angle and draw an arrow to the hypotenuse. And I have nothing marked on the hypotenuse, so I put a question mark there because do I have enough info? Not in this case. So in this case, it's, there's not enough to say they're congruent. Okay, coming down here to the bottom, find the values of x and y that would make each set of triangles, triangles, congruent by HL. The way those directions are written, they're saying assume the triangles are equal by the HL shortcut. If they were equal, tell me the value of x and y. Well, it's as simple as setting up an equation and solving. Okay, so I didn't really, I forgot about these two, or otherwise I would have said go get a calculator. But we should be able to do this. They work out nice. So you should be able to look at the picture and find the hypotenuse of each triangle and mark them congruent. So go to your picture, draw your arrows to the hypotenuse in each triangle. Mark them congruent because they told us, hey, they're congruent by HL. Then you can mark the legs congruent. And then now we have our equations that we can set up. So 3x plus 4 would have to equal what? 4y plus 1. And you'll solve that. And then we've got... Um, got uh, the other uh, equation, we got y plus 1 equals x. Let's set that up. Now we've set up both of them, right? Let's don't forget our methods of solving equations. We're so used to setting an equation up and solving for the variable that we forgot sometimes when you set an equation up, you have to do a little bit more work. Can I actually solve this equation for x? No. Can I solve it for y? No. Why, why can I not solve for either one of them? They're both in the equation. We don't know either one of them. Okay, come over here to this one. What is it already solved for? Technically, it's already solved for x. Do you notice x is by itself? So you have what's called an expression of y that you can replace over x. This is substitution. This is solving two equations by using the substitution method. So we can take this expression for x, we can come over here, I'll take my highlighter so it stands out, and where there's an x, I'm going to put what instead? y plus 1. Now how many terms is y plus 1? Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. y plus 1 is how many terms? 2. y plus 1 is 2 terms. So when I come over here and write y 
plus 1 in place of x, what should I put around it? I need to put parentheses. And then bring the 3 down, bring the plus 4 equals 4y plus 1. <coughs> now what do you notice is the only variable in your equation? A y. This is a multi-step equation exactly like the level of difficulty that we practiced the first and second week of school. Please solve it right now. You will get a pretty answer, okay? No decimals. So solve that for me. Did you combine like terms on the same side, like these two? ready to start moving stuff to the other side by the opposite operation. You get to move whatever you want. I chose to move 3y because if I subtract 3y from here, then I come over here and subtract it, I end up with a positive 1y. So if you chose to move 4y, you have a negative y over here. You'll still get the right answer in the end. Then I would subtract 1 and I get that y is Six. If y is 6, then what is x? x must be 7 if y is 6. Alright, I want you to try number 10. Make sure you set it up correctly. Find the hypotenuse before you just run in there and start showing things equal to each other. Find the hypotenuse. Go the right angle, draw an arrow to the hypotenuse. Mark those as congruent. And it's going to be another solve by substitution. I just noticed it had this nice little thing down here. Need the right six. Once again, we can't do anything at the beginning because we've got two variables in each equation. So you go to the equation where one variable is by itself. What would that be here? Which variable is by itself? A y. So we're going to take x plus 7 and we're going to replace it where we see the y. Now, in that case, you don't really have to do parentheses because you can, but there's not much going on. Well, it says that your triangle is congruent by each other. We're marking what's congruent. So we've got to find the hypotenuse. We'll mark those as congruent and then the leg would be congruent because it says by HL. So they're saying the hypotenuse is a congruent, the leg is congruent. So we just found them and then we marked them.
what you come to for x? 2 and y? 9? So I'm going to give you this sheet. It has 12 questions on it. Um, the front, I want you to leave the front blank and let me walk you through it tomorrow. You're doing the 12 on the back, okay? Um, we'll call this... We can just write the word triangle. We can draw this triangle symbol so there's not as much writing. You're going to do just the back. 